Well, lithium is a metal and it's mostly mined from South America and from Australia as well. And historically, it was mostly used in what we call industrial application. And that includes lithium usage in glass and ceramics, polymers, metal casting, and others. But today, most of the growth is coming from batteries. In recent years, it was batteries used in portable devices like your mobile phone, your computer, cameras, power tools, etc. But today, it's mostly coming from electric mobility application, including electric cars, but also electric trucks, e-buses, e-bikes, etc. And governments need to achieve strong um, electric vehicle adoption to meet the CO2 emission targets. And automakers, in turn, are also supporting and following this move by offering more electric vehicle models. So that's why there's a growing interest in electric vehicles and what goes in those vehicles, lithium-ion batteries, and what is used in those batteries to store energy, lithium. There are a number of agreements between automakers and battery manufacturers, but so far very limited integration further upstream in lithium production, for instance. And there are potentially plenty of opportunities to do so because there are a lot of new lithium projects out there. Since the surge in lithium prices, a lot of new companies have tried to enter the lithium fields. However, out of 400 different projects we have, a majority of them are still at an exploration stage, so very far away from producing any lithium. When you are a junior miner, there are two important things you need to secure. Expertise and funding. And funding is where automakers and battery manufacturers can step in by investing directly in a lithium project or by securing an off-tech agreement. And actually last year, out of all the off-tech agreements that were concluded in the lithium world, 70% were coming from Chinese players. China only accounts for 7% of lithium extraction, but they control more than 50% of lithium chemical production. They are the largest lithium-ion battery producer in the world, and they're also the largest electric vehicle maker in the world. So producers like BMW and Volkswagen will keep trying to secure lithium in the long term, but it will be a complex process because prices are unlikely to go back to a historical level. They're already behind the Chinese in terms of negotiation, and there are still a very limited number of suppliers to choose from. Based on our conservative growth for electric vehicle reaching 4% market share by 2025, it seems that enough lithium supply is there to meet demand in batteries. However, we still expect the market to remain tight. And that's because there will be delays in new plant startup, there will be lower production than expected in the first few years of preparation, and not all plants will be producing battery grade lithium. So in terms of lithium chemical prices, we expect them to remain at a high level for at least a couple of years, and then when significant capacity come on stream, that will lead to some erosion in prices, but we don't expect prices to go back to their historical level. But then if EV adoption is faster than planned, that could lead to some um, undersupply in the market and therefore higher prices. Well, you know, at IHS, there are so many industries we cover that are connected to lithium, our automotive business, our energy business, technology, chemicals, trade, etc. So we've decided to create an integrated monthly report covering the entire industry from lithium extraction all the way to electric cars, for instance, and very looking at every step along the way. So this new report will be covering market prices for lithium chemical, uh, we'll be covering, covering uh, news on lithium, batteries, electric vehicles, supply demand balances, long-term price forecast, pollution cost and margin, all of this combined in order to assist clients to make strategic decisions in the fast-moving lithium environment.